Buongiorno, welcome to this masterclass of the Locarno Film Festival. Uh, this very particular year as masterclass is linked to the initiative Films After Tomorrow, which is an initiative is a competition for projects who have been in some way impacted or had problems with uh, the, the actual situation. And we are trying to support these movies, but also we want to talk about this movie because we think these are movies, these are directors that uh, you would really enjoy discovering if you don't know them already. Now there is one Swiss director that definitely, if we have to say it from the heart of Locarno, we really want the world to know is Cyril Scharbin. Hello, Cyril. Hi. Where are you speaking from? I am in my studio in Zurich. Actually, not in my room, but in the room where there is the best internet connection. <laughs> there is also a very nice picture. Cyril, it's very, we're very happy to, to, to have you uh, with us. Uh, the Festival Locano has always uh, defended your cinema. You were in the Filmmakers Academy eight years ago. Three years ago, you were in the competition Leopards of Tomorrow. Your movie was a success here in the Festival of Locano and was a very big success in, uh, in cinema and theaters in Switzerland and had a very nice career uh, worldwide. So for us, it's a real, real big pleasure to, to have you with us in this uh, specific context. Now, before I introduce you, uh, people that will come with me, part of the Locarno community, and will interact and ask you a question. There is one thing I wanted to talk to you about because uh, I had the pleasure to watch again Dene's Dene was good gate. Sorry, how do you say that exactly? Dene was good gate. Yeah, those who are fine. If you say it in English, uh, this first speech you, you made, I had the uh, the joy to, to 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 watch again these days, and the one thing struck me. It, mm -hmm. it felt really like this society had already social distancing in it. You know, that was this society with already social distancing. It felt so cold. It feels so actual. Did you see it again, your picture in that perspective in this period? No, I didn't. Um, but yes, I guess, um, yeah, there is, um, I mean, there's no physical touch. There is only one physical touch in the whole picture. And um, but I never really thought about that, but it's true. Yeah, so we, we will talk about uh, this movie and about the um, the image of Switzerland you put in and the approach, the the, the very uh, unique approach you have from a directoral point of view, both in framing, storytelling, and director acting, uh, actor actors directing. Sorry, and but I would like to know more about you and how you started. So uh, to talk about it, I'd like to introduce you four uh, young critics, young passionate of cinema who've been through Cinema Gioventù. Cinema Gioventù is part of the filmmaker of the Locarno Academy, the Locarno uh, community, learning about and discovering about cinema for young talents. And it's the longest running initiative. It started back in the 60s. And every year we invite more or less 20 young uh, students from Switzerland and the north of Italy. But I'd like to introduce them. I'll start with uh, Rodrigo Munoz. <laughs> Rodrigo Munoz. Hello, Rodrigo. Please introduce yourself. Hi, Stefano. Hi, Cyril. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, so I'm, um, I'm Rodrigo. I'm uh, actually right now studying in, uh, in Ecal in Lausanne. In, it's my last year of uh, film school. And uh, I had the, the, the opportunity and the, the chance to, uh, to shoot my diploma project like uh, one week ago. So I just came out of shooting. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of questions uh, for you about shooting and about uh, direction and everything. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Nice and we have, a, we have also with us Atina, Atina Greco. Yeah. Hi, um, my name is Atina. I come from Lugano, but I'm studying in Zurich. I've just finished my bachelor in cinema and Italianistic. I've been part of uh, Cinema Gioventù in um, 2018. And uh, it was an amazing experience, and I just fell in love with Locarno Festival, and so that's why I'm here to ask, ask some questions. And that's why you always have a Leopard background. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. We have with us also Maximilian Gurschler. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Max. I'm from Alto Adige in the north of Italy, and I'm currently working on my master's thesis in philosophy at the University of Vienna, but I'm also interested in, in film and filmmaking, which is why I participated at uh, Cinema Gioventù. Uh, last and not least, Ariana Tedesco. Hello, hi. 
I'm Marianna and I just moved back uh, from Rome where I studied at the Rome University of Fine Arts, uh, Cinema and Filmmaking. I'm a film and video maker. And it's the first time for me to participate at the Cinema Juventus and I'm very excited. Well, uh, as you've seen, they are all young students, young passionate, young uh, talent maybe of uh, the cinema. And of course they want to know, first of all, uh, how your walk, your path in cinema started. Where was the beginning? So I know there are questions about it. Who wants to come first? Yeah, I was mm, curious about um, your studies because they were not like ordinary. Because I know you studied in China at the Central Academy of Drama in Beijing before then moving to Berlin. And like the Chinese culture is radically different from ours. Um, and they have also a different way of making cinema. So I was wondering how has this experience influenced your cinematic universe? I was 20 when I when I went to China, and um, it, for me it was just a really um, exciting time, and um, I, I learned a new language, and I, I'm, I've met a lot of new people, and um, yeah, so I guess it's and I've made films there, so it somehow had an impact on me, I guess. All right, I'm gonna jump in. I noticed that you have a recurring style in your artworks, in your films. And uh, I was wondering if it's kind of a choice you're trying to uh, develop in, in time, or is it like um, a thing that the stories suggest you? And I'm curious to know if in your new project you're going to um, experiment new a new style or keep going with your with your elements well uh, yeah i think i'm i feel like i'm always like um still trying to discover and and find out something new you know like if it's um if it was a short film or the, this first feature um and yes of course i want to find out some new stuff and 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 discover and at the same time, I really just, I think I found a certain way for me, which is like maybe that I'm maybe yeah trying to observe situations, maybe rather than like classical scenes. And I just like maybe cinematically speaking to have like this frame, like a, like a, a static frame or shot and then maybe invite situations to take place in within that frame and just wait for them to, to happen. And if I can jump in at this moment yeah. uh, to ask you a question, because yeah, when uh, Ariana talks about uh, your style, I uh, I suppose it's, it's uh, you get a lot of questions about your long shots and uh, your mm -hmm. this specific use of uh, long lenses, which are sometimes really, really long. I don't know how much, but... Uh, and I, I was asked, yeah. Very and I was long, asking yeah. myself um, because I just shot uh, my, my my diploma project, and I used some of these long lenses. And this has a really um, peculiar. Uh, it, it makes a really peculiar way of shooting because the camera has to be really at a long distance from the actors, which means that I was asking myself, where were you staying near the actors or near the camera? That really depended, but um, for example, we shot a lot from like parking lots, you know, parking houses. So because you can get really far from from the thing, and you you, you still see something because you you come from above, and um, yeah, sometimes I just I I I I was like we don't we didn't even have walkie talkies because it was so far. So we were talking through um, smartphones actually, and or so, some of them just had their smartphone on in the jacket. And I would uh, call them, so I would hear what they what they were saying. And yes, at other it, it depended on the, on the, on the technology because sometimes it was good to be there and and to to hear what they were saying. And yes, but you are right; it's quite far, quite far away. You must say also that your movie then it was good. Gate it was a uh, well fine. It's yeah. also a movie about. I mean, you you correct me if it's wrong. But it's a lot about uh, an alienation, a society where it's difficult to communicate 
And uh, this distance that you're talking about uh, technically is really what you observe in society. In that sense, it's a very, it's a very cold movie, not to say that doesn't have uh, uh, intensity, but uh, formally speaking, and the way uh, people are, are, are living, it's, it's, it's incredibly cold. And um, is it something that you reach step by step? Because in your short movies, you always feel like alienation of society, of singular people, of relation is, is an element that comes up a lot. It, was it like a, a reaching point in that sense? I don't know. Um, I mean, first of all, for I don't know if I would call it cold myself. I think it's just, I just somehow go with the flow. And for me, it, it also carries some warmth, I guess. Um, and um, maybe from the shorts, yeah, I don't know. I mean, of course they're connected, I think. Um, I just like to what what maybe happened out from from the shorts, maybe the ones that you saw of modern times and Lenny is that I just I came to this point where I really liked that that it, I just can sort of observe and something is happening and I'm not really this big part of it anymore, you know, so I can sort of just um, at one point, I mean, on, on the one hand, I sort of in why I, I know what more or less will happen, but at, on the other hand, it's all, also an open house invitation for things to take place, and um, and I think that's yeah what I what I already did a bit with the short films, and that's what happened in the Nevis Workate, and now I will see what's how it will go further. A more uh, general question about your uh, approach to filmmaking. Yeah. How how important is a, a specific project to you as a filmmaker? Like when you're at a certain point of pre-production, um, and it seems just like you, you can't get the financing. Let's say, which I guess is a pretty common problem in uh, for, for independent filmmaking. Um, at what point do you say to yourself, okay, this can't be done? I'll just have to move on to another film, another project? Um, or does it really have to be this specific project that you have to do? Um, is it about making this film and not about making movies in general? Um, I, I think with every film, I just like, I just know that I, that I will make it one, one way or the other. So um, even if I have no money at all, which was sort of the case with the last film. It was made for very little money. And I think there is always a way to, 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 to make the film, even, even if you don't really get the financing. Or in some mysterious way, just the exact financing you need follows, even if you think you know, you're not going to find it or something. So um, giving up wouldn't be an option? A, a project? A no. And um, sorry, how about uh, inspiration? Because I, I, we were doing uh, right before we started the conversation, we we're doing this sound check, and I, I thought, oh, this this would be like a scene in uh, in Cyril's movie, you know, where people have to say one two one two check, and it's really cold, and people are just not talking about anything else than really technical things. Um, yeah, where does your inspiration come from? Is it easy easy to get, or do you just go in the Swiss? Switzerland streets and you see scenes f everywhere. Yeah, I guess that's sort of what's happening. <laughs> I, like, I, I just like a lot to, to, to listen to people in the, in the trains or in the trams or cafes. And, but also my friends, I think what you just said with, uh, before when we were doing technology, like techno language for, for a moment, um, I, me personally, I really like those moments because they are, for me, not cold or unvalid moments. They are also here, like every other moment in the this thing we call existence. You know? I mean, it's just um, it's always happening, and I think because they are considered uh, random moments or 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 what you say like marginal moments. Um, I like to put, I just, for me, they, they talk to me somehow and by, by putting them into a film and, and giving them a, a place um, and, and a, yeah, a space, a place, um, they 
they are put into the center. And then I think it's interesting what it does to us. And of course, also, also me, I think it's quite funny. And um, yeah, so your question was inspiration. Yeah, so I guess it's it comes from real experiences in my life and um, with my friends or with the things that I see in the, in the trains or wherever I am. I think um, there are constant themes that follow several of your works, like mm -hmm. technology, internet, or also money seems to be always in the center of people's thoughts. So why this choice to portray so a gray and disillusioned society and to approach this very topic such as money? I don't know if money is disillusionist. Do you think? Do you think money is um, itself disillusionist thing? Mm, no, but I don't know. Uh, I've seen the the feature film. Those were fine, mm -hmm. and I think that it, there was like a fil rouge uh, that was governed by money and the internet. Yes. I mean, money is quite important, I guess, anyhow. Um, and for me, it's something uh, maybe at, at, in, in the first place, not so, I don't know though. I mean, it's not a really poetic thing, a really passionate subject, of course, but, um, me sometimes I think I can see some poetry there or maybe something mysterious and um, that's on yeah maybe a, that's one thing to say and um, of course then or this is also what the next film is it probably yeah I, I'm trying to discover with the next film is um, of, yeah, that I'm interested in how we organize our our coexistence and what role does money play in that and and um, what's the order of our economy and how could it be different and by showing also in, in the last film then was quite gate um, certain situations or actions in between people um, I guess I would wish for that some questions come up in, 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 in the people who watch the film or in myself or whoever about um, yeah about how we organize economy and society and how it could be done differently. One thing I'd like to prolong in the question of Athena because it's true I know you you're very passionate and when you see we see your movie your movie is wonderful for the, the kind of detachment that there is. I use maybe the word coldness before, which I, I have to moderate with the word humor because there's empathy with, with the characters. But uh, your new project, uh, the Unrest, the one uh, with films after tomorrow, seems like a more passionate, I wouldn't say romantic, but it's like a more sentimental, something that can bring more emotion to the movies. So I, I was wondering if that subject could bring a different approach from a director point of view. Do you think th this would be totally different from uh, those who are fine from a directoral uh, approach and directing of actors? I can't imagine that it will be. <laughs> and um, no, I, I think it will be similar in, 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 the, in the approach because that's, that's um, the, the way I, I'm, I like to work or we like to work because I'm working with, with, with a lot of the same people like, like in my first film, first feature. And um, I mean, yeah, we will see what's, what will happen. I mean, similarly to, to, the, to the last film, there will be a lot of um, real people who in their, re or let's say who in their real life also do, like in the last film, there were a lot of um, call center people, professional call center people who, who were in the film. And for the next film, there will be a lot of watchmaking people who will be in the film. And um, then we will see what will happen. And, you know, if, if they will start to hawk <laughs> in every scene, 
that that will be okay or you know if everyone kisses constantly this is this is this is this this would be great mm -hmm. um what i'm trying to say maybe is that it's really um uh, as i said already before it in I know more or less what's going to happen in the next film, but in other, in another, yeah, I'm also inviting a lot, which is not in only in my control. And um, yeah, try, yeah, trying to invite only the best and the most um, magic stuff possible. Can you just explain for the audience in a few words what is the the, the topic uh, of the, the the movie you are preparing? Um, well, the, the topic um, is uh, I mean, a certain time, the 1870s in, 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 in northwestern Switzerland. In, in, in the, the scenery is the watchmaking industry and this early industrial capitalist boom time. And on the other hand, the, the, the rising anarchist international movement who had its like um yeah you could say federal office of this organization was in this watchmaking area and that's also where they were meeting and within all of this um, the film focuses on different people but mainly uh, a young uh, watchmaking factory worker woman Josephine and um, a young Russian traveler Pyotr Kropotkin. <laughs> One thing that interests me um, about your new project is that the setting of the plot um, is at the beginning of uh, industrial capitalism in Europe as you've already mentioned. So uh, in philosophy there is this concept of axial age uh, which means a, a very key moment in the development of history and society. Do you think that the beginning of industrial capitalism is such an axial age, so a, a key moment for the good and the bad things we have in our society today, and also maybe for the way of thinking that you want to criticize with your movie? Or, or does it have to do with your personal background as well, since I've read somewhere that you come from a family of watchmakers? Of course, it has to do with the, with with my family background and the personal background. But your question regarding the this this time and if it has a um, um, a connection to to our time, uh, of course it does because obviously we live in a in a you know late liberal or yeah it's like the peak of the of the how do you say the cherry on the icing of the industrial cake what we are going through now i would say with digitalization and the ultra industrialization which will take us to a, to a next level somehow but um by i think only by talking about the 1870s and this time which which you just said is kind of crucial maybe um for the present is also, um, of course, a choice. What information we take from that time and what what what, what we want to see in that time. And um, the film will will uh, will much more than trying to explain this 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 era and the 1870s. It will take certain elements of that time and uh, to hopefully raise questions about our present and all these constructions that we are surrounded with, all these fictions also, because um, yeah, like the, the idea that we have that we are part of a nation and um, that we have a national identity and all that stuff. Um, and of course, this whole time is money concept. I think by going back and showing the birth of, of, these, of these concepts, uh, I hope, yeah, to, to to look at what we are doing now um, in a different way so we can maybe change it. Mm -hmm. And I also had a question about your, your new project. Um, as, I, as I wrote your, uh, your file, uh, I mean, you wrote a little text and I was imagining that you were right now in the casting process maybe. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I was asking myself how, it, uh, how do you deal with actors since 
well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but your films uh, usually speak about the greater than the individual. It's not about individuals, it's about society and uh, larger things. And how uh, do you deal with actors which maybe ask themselves themselves the question, why does Cyril really want to film me? You know, uh, <laughs> actors have this individual thing. Uh, and yeah, how do you deal with that? That's really interesting. Yeah, thank you. I mean, that just made me realize some stuff. Um, uh, well, first of all, I don't really work with actors in the classical sense of actors, I guess. So a lot of people who will be in the film are um, maybe friends of mine or they are really watchmakers or they are um, artists or, or, or even a former bank robber will be in the, in, in the film. <laughs> Actually, the guy who spent like one of the most famous bank robbers in Switzerland, Hugo Portman. And um, and your question is why or like what do they think why I want them to be in the film? This is a really good question because, as you said, it's like um, I sometimes think that it's maybe not so important who will play which role. You know, like anybody could play this role or that role or. I also like to take people to play roles who are really not, like in my last film, there were, a lot of policemen were um, rappers, like Zurich local rappers. And um, yeah, I like to play with this to, to, to have this maybe puzzling um, kind of energy when, when, when we will shoot the film, when, when the people will come and get these costumes and, be like okay now I'm, I am a policeman in the 1870s or I am a, a, a factory owner in the 1870s and maybe not even be so super prepared for the role for example because they were just working in a bakery the day before or I don't know what and just go there and then just go into the situation we're doing because for, for, from what I see or from what I know, um, most things that I see in, in life or, or um, yeah, situations or, or when people see each other or when things are happening, they are kind of, they, they don't seem so clear, you know, they seem to me more like kind of puzzling and, and, and a lot of random stuff happening. And why do we, why do I now say this? And why do I now do that? You know, it's kind of, it's very much in the open. So, yeah, I'm, so as you said, I think um, everybody could play in this kind of. But, so. but somehow um, your, your actors, I mean, do you show your actors your, your, the films that you already made? Because the humor in your film uh, relies on the fact that they are really serious in this scene and they're just playing a really, technical as we were talking scene so they they can't know that that's that's the thing you're filming right so how do you do that well actually in the last film for example when the two cops are sitting in the car and uh, you know the civil the not the, the non-uniformed cops and they are both good friends of mine and actually one of them is also in the studio where i am right now and when I could hear him talking sometimes, when I was working in my room, I would hear him talking on the phone to his bank or his insurance company. And this, and to me, this distance of who he is in real life and who he tries to be when he's talking to his bank or how his voice changes and so on was incredibly funny. So I just told him, you know, do this kind of language about this like you are on the phone to your internet uh, you know subscriber blah 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 and it was interesting that for most of them it was very easy to just improvise this kind of technical language and but even while we were filming they 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 thought it was funny i mean they could easily yeah they, they knew it was going to be funny for them to see this or for me to watch it I don't know for if it is funny for everybody it's a free choice but um but um yes so I don't know if all of the people will will watch the last film but 
I think there are kind of there are certain situations, um, technical situations, which are um, so clear that they sort of take over and just navigate people through, like organize it, like producing a certain piece in the watch. It just has has to be done, no? I mean, and but. I think what interests me now that we're talking about this technical stuff that it's um, that it's always um, it's still people with 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 souls or with uh, with um, yeah with with, with, with with hearts and emotions and everything. <laughs> so I really like this distance of um, having to go through a technical situation, but at the same time be a human being with a. A lot of other stuff in your mind, you know. So. I'd like to talk about your your Swiss identity. Uh, some Swiss filmmakers don't like to put the word Swiss too much, to highlight it too much. Uh, I think that for you, uh, the reality of Switzerland is very uh, interesting, very stimulating, and uh, very <clears throat> relevant, and uh, and also the way you interact with the Swiss identity. So my first question is. Are you proud to be a Swiss filmmaker? And are you, do you find really challenging, stimulating to watch uh, Swiss society? Ooh, if I'm proud, um, I mean, this, <laughs> this, okay. Because first you said, yeah, some people, I mean, what, what is Swiss is a, it's quite a big question. Um, well, I have to maybe go a bit to another place to talk about this. For me, it's fundamentally if this world that we are living in, um, or the, yeah, the cities and everything, are they seem a bit to me like uh, like there are so many fictions, like a jungle of fictions and of, of constructions, and uh, of course the the idea of a nation or of uh, Switzerland, a country, is also a fiction very serious fiction, but a fiction, you know? And um, for me, I, I think I rather like to, to connect to, to neighborhoods or, 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 or people or, you know, things like chairs and rivers and, and language and dialects and jokes and people, I don't know, than to, um, yeah, this, Swiss identity, like my passport or um, uh, identity card, but um, yeah, I know that it's there. And but in that sense, now it's, it's interesting what you say because actually, when you're talking about river, there's one choice you made, which is very interesting, and I really want to know why you made that choice, which I find interesting, but I wouldn't uh, be able to explain why. Uh, the beginning of uh, those were fine. It's three people. Uh, talking Arab, and the only background we have of them is just this river flowing, probably the Limat. And uh, why did you choose, since the movie is really about Swiss society, I mean, it's so Swiss, why did you make this specific choice? This thing doesn't come back in the movie, it's just like the first act, like a, a beginning of the movie. Mm, I this idea just came to me. I mean, I, I personally have some have some some relationships to the Arab world through my family and uh, or my my ex girlfriend or my brother who who spent a lot of his life in in the Middle East. So this I don't I have a certain connection to the language, and then I I just thought for for the film I thought it would be kind of good if if in the beginning we already know what will be happening in the film so we can just follow and um, and look at the other stuff and not at this crime kind of which is important for the film but also not so important. So I had the idea to 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 tell the whole thing in the beginning, and then I just thought who could who could tell this in advance so i i had the idea to to have three people who are completely disconnected to the whole um film story um and tell it to each other and um this came kind of intuitive but i think it, it made sense for me also until now because it's um i think we we have 
so much um, we talk so much about about uh, Arab societies or what's happening there and and so on and I really like to to twist this around and and just have three people talking about this in a different language and which are completely disconnected to the thing but what does that if you, if you take a, yeah this other outsider perspective Ariane uh, or Atina, instead of the moment we don't hear from you. Yeah, um, I have a curiosity. I, I'd like to, to know, I, I recognize it's a difficult question. I'd like to know how these uh, thoughts you started uh, to, to dig in with uh, Lenny until now with your last project and unrest, how these thoughts developed in time, like what was your start point and where you are now speaking of uh, society, sociability, media and technology. Can you like shortly have a... You, <laughs> you, you mean from the, from the, since Lenny until, until now? Until now, or? yes, how your thoughts uh, have changed in, uh, in this time, also because of your art project? I guess it is still very, I mean, for me, the, the, the fundamental approach maybe or something is still quite similar that I just, I, I see things that, that um, ra raise my attention or I think this is interesting maybe also in a, in a, I don't know, sometimes it's maybe a bit when you, when you read a poem or something and you, 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 you read it and you understand it, but you don't really know why, you know, you just have this something is happening. And I think these moments happened for me with, when I was making Lenny and it is still happening now. So I really have to go back to this time to think where I was back then and where I am right now. I think, yeah, maybe it's kind of non-linear or something, you know, I, 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 yeah, because it's also, I mean, people often say that life is moving so fast and, you know, like in the blink of an eye and it's 10 years. And for me, this is really, I don't really feel this so much. It's, it's actually, I feel like life is quite slow and um, I don't, yeah. So I don't see it so linearly maybe. So it's more like, uh, to me, it's like circling around certain islands or something that I'm, that I'm trying to get to. And I guess it's still similar places like in, in when was it 2009 and now 2020. I hope that's kind of an answer. It's, it's very interesting that you say that uh, your, your concept of time, so to speak, isn't linear, but, but more like uh, a circle or so, because um, you, you talk about these uh, fictions like uh, national identity, and that you would rather live in, 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 in the actual world, like a river and dialect. But you also mentioned time uh, as one of those fictions. And I wonder, can you, can you say a bit more about that? Because I think time is like a, a, one of the most real things there is, right? And even, even just now when you answered uh, her question, you talked about time and how it passes so slowly for you. Um, so what's your approach to that? So if I understand correctly, you said, like that I said before, that time is also a fiction? Yes. And for you to, okay. Um, I mean, this, maybe I can tell something about my research for the new film, because the new film is a lot about the beginning of time measurement and the watch industry. And because all of our organization or the beginnings of industrial capitalism, of course, were very much related to how to organize time schedules and who, who goes when to the factory and how much do you work for getting which salary and so on. So, um, However, I, I went to I went to a really good watchmaker in Switzerland, and I asked him about what time is, and he said to me that 
we have no idea, even him, and he's a, he, he's a physician and a watchmaker. He is a yeah, whatever PhD physics man. And he said to me, we, we have no idea what time is. This is completely out of reach still for physics. But we can, with a with watch, or we can sort of, sort of define events. In the case of a watch, it would be a tick and a tack. You know? Tick tock, tick tock. So we have two different events. And by counting these events, we can say a certain, you know, series of events happened, and this is a certain amount of time. But it is very much, it has very much to do with, with this with this machine that we created, the watch, how we perceive it. So I think uh, or to give you, or to give another example, like what, what, what will play a role in the in the next film is that in 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 in, in the different villages or towns in Switzerland in the 1870s there were four like four or three or four different time zones. So there was a factory time, there was a, a village time, there was a national time, and the local time, and it was like a battle of these different times also in a kind of who has the biggest authority who has the you know or the most money to 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 pull their own time system through and and um i think it's then when you realize a bit that it's a, that it is a construction at least this idea that now is exactly 330 and you believe this and we all believe it but it's a it's a it's an agreement on a on a construction and there are other ways of counting time, I am sure. Well, it, it, seems like, it seems like research shows that time doesn't exist, but the truth is we are running out of time and we still have time for a, a couple of questions. I don't know if, if it was Athena or... Yeah, speaking I, about I, the time, I, was, uh, I want to ask a more practical question. Like what drove you to set aside short films to dedicate yourself to to this format, to future film that require different tools and uh, yeah, what 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 were the most difficult problems or obstacles to overcome initially? To to make a, a feature film. Yeah. Um, I can, for me, it's kind of, I cannot really make a big difference between short films and feature films. I think it's just a, making a film and a, kind of an endeavor. But um, of course, you to make a, a longer film, you there's more people which you need to, to organize and to ask. And, you know, you have to cook more sort of more food. And, and um, yeah, it just takes longer. So, for me, I think what what the, the, the challenge was to to find a way to even with 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 a very small budget to find a good structure where where I would feel um, comfortable or we would feel comfortable as as a group to to do our work and uh, be kind of you know chaotic and flexible and because we had really sort of punk methods like uh, we had no um how do you say uh how do you say like no uh, we, we had no um allowances how do you say like we were not allowed to film on on the on, on, on the on the locations mostly so we just went there and hoped that it will be okay <laughs> and um yeah but police never showed up yeah, yeah i think a lot of stuff like finding confidence and um that and trust that it will be fine and and the courage and um, yeah it's just doing it i also had the like the impression that the film seems to start initially with um a series of scenes that belong to everyday life and only after a while they begin to form a story as if the film was born in the process like that's the impression i got from i don't know if it's right but I just wondering um, when you start shooting, do you have everything in your mind or something comes with with the time? Yeah, that's a very good, 
I think, or important question for, for this uh, work that we are doing also, I mean, not only me, but everyone, um, that it's kind of, that it's on, on, on the one hand, it's, it's in, we know quite well what will be happening. Like there, we know the, the mostly we know the, 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 you know, the shot we will do, like the static shot is quite prepared. And we know which people will be in, in the scene. And maybe, you know, for in the last one, we have this laser thing to, to check on the people. So we have certain things. And, but then a lot of the stuff is open and, Maybe with what I what I mean with this invitation for things to take place is like I I I just think I could you know some other films they work really well with this perfect perfectionized script maybe but I think it's I I I don't think I could really do this because the things that I'm interested in they also have like their own logic maybe you know and and their own. Um, intelligence even you know like even a tree or a, or <laughs> or or a trash bin has kind of an intelligence in some way and i just like to go there and, and film this tree and the trash bin and then someone's walking through and talking and knowing that there is a that there is an information also there there is an its own intelligence and by observing it then we get new ideas for what could be in the next scene maybe or or yeah, so it's it's a it's a mix of we know very well what will be happening. Like also for the next film, I know the first scene, I know the last scene, I know many scenes. But then I'm also very much open to while filming, finding out stuff that I didn't know about. Like because I, even if I'm from a watchmaker family, I I don't know what it means to work twelve hours or eighteen hours, you know, which it was in the eighteen seventies or now in these days nine hours on a tiny little piece of metal and just reproducing the same piece. So maybe when we will film it and talk to the people while filming, there will be stuff for new. I'm sorry, the clock has been ticking and we've come to the end. I'd like to like uh, to, to, to thank everyone. I'd like to thank Rodrigo, thanks Atina, thank Maximilian, thanks Ariana. And uh, thanks also to Filippo De Marchi of Cinema Gioventù who selected you and prepared you for this meeting. And most of all, uh, thank Cyril very much uh, for being with us and sharing this moment. And we wish you all the best for the shooting of Unrest, which we will hope to see next year or some, some very, very near. Thank you everybody so much for talking. <laughs> thank you Cyril, very much. Cyril, bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, Cyril. Thanks, Stefano. Ciao, Cyril. Bye.